So the next one is our HTTP. So we are done with this. HTTP, which is our what? The hypertext transfer protocol. HTTP. Hypertext transfer protocol is an application level protocol for distributed, collaborative, hypermedia information system. It is used for retrieving interlinked resources led to the establishment of the World Wide Web. HTTP is a um, request or a stroke response standard of a client and a server. Listen to that. It is a request stroke response standard of a client to a server. It means it is the client that makes the request, then the server responds. But they make use of the word HTTP. Now, a client is the end user, the server is the website. Now, the client making a HTTP request using a web browser or other end user tool is referred to as the user agent. The responding server which stores or create resources such as HTML, files, and images is called the origin server. In between the user, agent, and origin server may be several intermediaries such as proxies and gateways. Those ones, don't worry. I won't bug you with that. Because between that particular server and the requesting web browsers, there are other things. There are other things. There's great way, there's proxy server, and so on and so forth. Now, when we say HTTP, HTTP, let me just put it this way. HTTP is like a protocol that your web browser uses. That's why when you are browsing, you see you see this. This is your browser. Then at this particular address bar, we call this address bar. The first thing you see is what? HTTP, isn't it? Hello? Do you understand? HTTP, Abby, you now see www. So, 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 and so, so, so. Abby, that's how it is. So, the first thing that needs to be known is that this is an hypertext transfer protocol and it is actually used for what to browse a website it takes you to a website now let me put it this way now every website is actually created even if it is being created using a php now the basic language for creating a website is what we call html and what's the meaning of HTML? Hypertext markup language. Okay, now look at it from this way. I told you earlier that the computer doesn't understand ABC. Abby, the computer doesn't understand one, two, three. The only thing the computer understands is what? Ones and zeros. Bits. In bits. Okay, ones and zeros. Now, when a website is developed using an HTML language when it's coming into the network something has to interpret it, something has to turn it into digits for it to pass through the network it won't pass through the network as HTML it passes through the network as series of what? binary values now, when it comes to your browser let's assume you say www.com google.com that is a request by a web browser I mean, now when you send okay a server on which google is stored will respond do you understand that a server on which google is stored will respond now when it responds it sends a file we call it index Dot HTML. Now, what is the index? Index is always the home page. 
When you go to Facebook, that www.facebook.com. I want you to read the address back. One way or the other, immediately you go there, not your own page now, just the facebook.com. You see index.html or index.php. Another user. Now, the index file will be the home page that will be sent. Now, it is being sent as an HTML file. Now, while passing through the network, it is converted into what? Digits. Now, it is this HTML, uh, HTTP protocol that converts it back into what? Into the HTML form for you to be able to read and see. Are, are we making sense? So, that's the function of an uh, a, a HTTP protocol. Now, um, there's what we call FTP. That is the file transfer protocol. The file transfer protocol. Now, after this file transfer protocol, I will the rest of them I'll just read through them. Okay. These are the basic ones I want you to understand. Okay. Now, when we say file transfer protocol, which is FTP, is a network protocol used to exchange and manipulate files over a TCP computer network. Listen to that. It is a protocol that is used to manipulate or send files over a TCP computer network. It means the computer network must have been connected using TCP protocol. But you still need a file transfer protocol to transfer the files. Am I, am I making sense? Now, um, an FTP client may connect to an FTP server to have access to and manipulate files on that server as if the files are directly on the local storage medium. The use of FTP include the following, to promote sharing of files, to encourage indirect or implicit use of remote computers, and to shield a user from variations in the file storage system among different hosts, and to transfer data reliably and efficiently. Now, FTP is actually basically used for file sharing and manipulation. Okay, let me give you an example. Most of us now, we, we, we have, we have Google Drive. Have you, have, you, have you ever you've heard of Google Drive? We have um, uh, there's another one. There's what? Dropbox. There is Dropbox. Now on your phone, you just notice you 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 immediately send all your pictures to Dropbox. You are making use of what FTP. And if you want to download them back, you use FTP to download them back. But note. Your computer must first be connected to the what? Internet. Then you are connected using what? TCP. Which is the connection. Then you now use FTP on your TCP to transfer the files. That's how it works. Are we making sense? Hello? Are we making sense? So that is that. Is that. Now let me just talk about uh, SOAP. SOAP is a protocol specification for extending structured information in the implementation of web service. In computer network, uh, as a layman's example of how SOAP produces a uh, uh, um, procedure can be used, a SOAP message could be sent to a web service enabled website, for example, a house price database with the parameters needed for a search. Now, the site would then turn an XML format, okay, formatted document with the resulting data. Which is the price, location, features, etc. Because the data is returned in a standard format, it could then be integrated directly into a third party website. So it's actually basically used for sending messages. Hello? So is a protocol used for sending messages. There's another one called the Internet Message Protocol, which is the IMAP. Internet Message Protocol. That one says, IMAP is one of the two most um, prevalent internet standard protocol for email retrieval. IMAP is actually for what? Retrieving 
emails. Okay? I'll give you an example where you can see it. Another one is what we call the SMT. SMTP. The SMTP is an internet standard for electronic mail. It's also used for what? Email. POP is also used for what? Email. Now, for example, if you go to your... Most of you that have um, um, Android phone, when you want to configure your mail server, you know there's, a, there's this particular application on your phone that, that, that has, they just write mail or email. You can connect like as in, in on my phone, I have my Hotmail on that email, I have my Gmail, I have my Yahoo on that particular mail. So I can receive all my messages from the three emails on that particular application. Now, when you go to that application, you want to do manual configuration. You will see there will, there will, there will be options for you like, are you using POP? Are you using IMAP? and so on and so forth. These protocols are actually used for what? For emails, for sending messages and retrieving email messages. So, now, so let us talk about the OSI reference model. Now, the meaning of OSI, OSI means Open System Interconnection Reference Model. Open System Interconnection Model. Now, this model is actually developed in order to understand the layers of communication okay are we there the layers of communication so let me read the open system interconnection reference model osr or osr model is an abstract description for layered communications of computer network protocol design it was developed as part of the open system interconnection initiative in its most basic form osi divides network architecture into seven layers which from a it forms okay which from top to bottom it is from what from top to bottom are uh, the application layer and so on and so forth we have the application layer presentation layer session transport network data link and physical layer therefore it is often referred to as the osi seven layers A layer is a collection of similar functions that provide services to the layer above it. Listen to that. A layer is a what? Is a collection of similar functions that provide services to the layer above it and receive services from the layer below it. Now, before I read further, I will just explain. Now, if we are to list the OSI model, there is this um, kind of acronym I use. Listen to this because it is. It is a bit, um, it might not be easy for you to, 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 uh, how do, how do I say, to cram it. Now, if I want to do OSI model, I will say, please, please, do not throw sausage pizza away listen to that please do not throw sausage pizza away please do not throw sausage pizza away now let me now name it now this one stands for what physical layer this one stands for data link data link layer this stands for network layer this is transport layer this is session layer this is presentation layer and this is application layer. You can see, it makes it so easy for me to be able to just list them. So just remember, please do not throw sausage pizza away. Now, 
According to what we read here, we said a layer is a collection of similar functions that provides service to the layer above it. Now, this layer provides service to the layer above it. Are we getting, are we making sense? That's what we are saying. And we are saying that a layer that provides um, error-free communication across the network provides the path needed by application above it. Why it calls the next lower layer to send and receive packets to make up the contents of that part. Are we making sense? So this man provides service for this man. This man provides service for this man. Now this man will tell this man, send your data packets to me so that I can provide service for this man. That's how it works. Now we will just quickly now according to what we have said, the OSI model uh was developed by the uh, International Organization for Standard, for Standard, which is the ISO, in an effort to develop standard communication architecture that satisfies all demands across heterogeneous communication platform and devices. Now, let's look at this. All these are divided into um, into segments. Now, we say from one two and three we are saying this particular one is for data okay data this man okay this man one two three from here to here are data related okay now from here to here from here to here are from for the what host layer now this small place just this small place is for segments and from here which is from your network to this place let me put it this way from your network to this place you have the media layer And here, on your network, you have the packets. On the data layer, you have the frame. And here, it is, you have bits. If you should understand what I'm trying to do. It means, from this place, this place, this one, this one, this one, this three. Are data okay like you are sending your data hmm? these are on the host computer okay from here to here on the host layer okay on the host computer now from here packets exist here and segments are exist, are exist here but I'll still explain them now we are saying the network the application layer we said network process uh, network process to application. Let me just define this thing in layman's way so that you understand. Now, if you are sending something, let's say you are browsing a website from one computer to another. Now, what exists on your application layer is your your applications like Mozilla. Okay, what else? Your Internet Explorer, your Opera, Opera Mini, and so on and so forth. This is where they work, they exist. Now, when you say www.facebook.com, you type, bam, and you press enter. Okay, let's assume this particular one is trying to browse a particular website. So by, by sending facebook.com, you have made a what? A request. Now it will pass through the other layer to this place. Okay? Actually, most people would explain it from bottom to the up. But I want to explain it from the upper layer to the lower layer. Okay? Now, immediately you send 
that particular message comes to the presentation layer. Now, what exists here is a form of HTTP. Okay? Now, remember we said, so I just want to explain it in a layman's way so that you quickly understand. I don't want to use too much computer data. Now, when we say presentation layer, when you send this particular thing, like a code to the network, at this level, the message is still on your computer. That's why we said host layer. It is still on your what? On your computer. Now, the second thing it does in the software, in the network software, is to come to the what? Presentation layer. Now, presentation layer presents that message in a form that will be understood by the network. Do you understand it now? Look it like that with that. It presents this particular message from this application layer to a form that the network will want to understand. Now, when it comes to that side, immediately this one is done with its job. Presenting it into a form that the network will understand. It comes to the what? The session layer. It sends the message down to the session layer. Oh, session. Let's assume the message is, like say, like 30 megabytes. Session layer breaks it down into sessions. Do you understand me now? Okay, let's break it down into sessions so that we send it like segment by segment. Are we, are we getting it? So it wraps it with whatever things it wants to wrap it with. So that when it gets to its destination, it can what? Be arranged. So that's what happens on the session. Now, the session layer now sends the messages to the what? Transport layer, according to its name. This is where your what? Your IP. That is, this is where your TCP is located. Now, the transport layer is its own function is like a bus, your normal bus, a vehicle, to route to send this particular message to the what? To the right destination. Am I making sense? That's why they call it what? The transport layer. Now, when it gets to the transport layer, now at this particular level, you are leaving the computer. So it is at this one, two, three, four. On the fourth level, your message is now moving away from your world, from your computer. Now it's now entering the world into the network. Now on the network, this is where your IP address exists. Okay? Where the address of the destination will be put into what? Into account. Oh, where is this message really going to? Are we making sense? It's like you, you want to send a message to your friend. You are writing a letter. As you are writing the letter, you envelope it. You write the address of your friend on the envelope. Then you will walk down to the what? To the post office to post it. Am I making sense? Then if they are to post it there, what would they look at? The address on the envelope. So that's what happens here. Now, the message is now sent to the network layer for it to be delivered to the what? To the right destination. Now, data link layer. Data link layer here. At this particular junction, we have a physical connection. Like, okay, what exists here is what we call your, for example, your MAC address exists here. When you say MAC address, you be like, ah, what is MAC address? Again? MAC address means media access control address. Now, for every device on the network, for every device on the network, has its own unique MAC address. No two digital device has the same MAC address. Are we making sense? Now, if you want to know the MAC address of your phone, you can find it there. Okay? Most of us, when you, when you browse, when you, when, you, when you are connected to a particular Wi-Fi, you will see addresses will be shown. Addresses. You can even check for the MAC address of that particular Wi-Fi device. So look at MAC address as the address of... The MAC address exists at your internet... Like at your network interface card. 
you know, when you have your computer, your laptop, you plug a network cable on, on it. Now, that particular port, you plug your network cable to as an address. The name of that address is the what? The MAC address. So, no two internet interface has the same MAC address. Are we making sense? So, from there, the data is what? Now connected using your physical layer. At this junction, this is where you have your cables. The cables that connect your what? Hello? The cable that connects your computer to the other computer. Are we making sense? So at this point, this particular point, I want you to look at it like this way. This from here to here is like a software control. Exists within a software. Okay? Now, from here to here, exists within the hardware. Are we making sense? Now, when it enters to the next computer, it will enter from the what? The lower to the upper. Are we making sense? So that's how it works. That's OSI model. Okay? That's OSI. Um, right now, we are to talk about uniform resource locator. Yes, and you can find that on page um, 367 of the um, pack. Now, when we say uniform resource locator, we say to be able to see a particular web page, you have to be able to find it among the many millions of others spread around the internet. This is done using a uniform resource locator called U R L. Now, as the name suggests, a uniform resource locator is a standard way to describe the location of a particular resource, like the position of a web page. So, a URL is an address. Now, when, when you talk about URL, look at this example. We have something like HTTP. Isn't it? Yeah. HTTP www dot I can IG dot org slash NG slash login dot HTML. Okay. Now, when you see this. Now we need to break this down into this is a complete URL. Okay, when you say URL, you are just actually talking about the actual location of a particular file on the web on, on the web page. Okay, so now when when you see when you say HTTP, you say this is the name of the protocol used to send the information between the server and your computer. Now HTTP. This HTTP is a what? Is a protocol. You know, you remember we said a protocol is protocols are set of rules, okay? That governs how computers what communicate. Now, so this is a protocol, okay? That shows immediately a browser sees HTTP, it knows that it is for what? It is for a web-based application, okay? Now. You are saying um, a protocol is a set of rules specifying how communication between computers should take place. Ordinarily, web pages are, are sent using hypertext transport protocol. So, most URLs start with the application HTTP. The name of the protocol is always followed by a colon and two slashes like this. Okay, now when we now get to www.ican.org www.icon.org What do you think this is? Now, the www.icon.org is actually what we call the domain name. Okay? Now, this is the protocol. Protocol. This is the what? Domain. Okay? This is the domain name. Now, according we said, so this is the address. Like the website. Yeah, this is a domain name. This is a particular page on the website that's what a, a url is do you understand yeah. now when you say a domain name 
Now you are saying this is the address of a web server. Most computers that have permanent access to the internet, like the web server, have an address consisting of a number of words separated by full stop called dots. In this case, the address of the computer is www.icanng.org. Now look at this. I was saying something the other time. Now, behind every domain name, now a domain name is an address of a server on the what? On the internet. Are we making sense? Yes. Now, you won't understand yet. Now, when I say ICANN.org, now, ICANN.org has something behind it. Because the, the network itself or the computer itself doesn't really understand ICANN.org. What is ICANNIG.org? It is not clear. Now, the reason for this is for humans to be able to distinguish between websites, to be able to have, how do I call it, this relationship with website names. Now, behind every domain name, there lies what is called an IP address. <coughs> are, we, are we making sense? Now, behind this icon.org, um, page 368. Now, behind this icon.org, there's something like, for example, there might be the meaning of icon.org could be something like 10.10.20.8. .10 this is an example of an IP address. Now, it means on the internet, this address is the address of the server on which this file is stored. Now, later when we move forward, we talk about what is called um, um, DNS. This is where DNS comes in, when you are browsing. Domain name servers which are located around the world, domain name servers. When you type www.google.com, the first thing that happens is, because google.com is not really clear to the network, the first thing that happens is, this particular google.com is sent from your computer through the network to the nearest domain name server. Look at domain name servers like as, as web dictionaries or web encyclopedias okay that they have the they have the um ip equivalent of each domain name stored on them so when this is sent to the dns the dns will now reply the network with the ip address saying oh the meaning of google.com is 10.10. .10 20.8 as an example of an IP address. Am I making sense? Now, immediately this is sent to your network, the message will immediately be transferred to this destination. That's how it works. Now, from here, you now have what's called .org. Now, you have what's called .ng. Now, let's talk about this is the position of the web page folder or directory on the server. Names of folders are separated by slashes. Now, whenever you are browsing, whenever you see on your address bar, okay, this is written on the address bar. Let's imagine that. Now, when you see slash, it means protocol HTTP, this is the word, web domain name, now on this server. It means on this server, there is a folder called ng. So basically, when you go into um, directories, like you have a folder name, a folder name, let me say the parent name, uh, slash, any other name that comes here will be a child folder of this parent name. Meaning, this one is inside this. So that's how it is on the web too. Meaning, there is a folder called ng. Okay, now when you now come here, you can see another slash again slash login dot HTML. It means this login dot HTML is a what you can see something that's written dot HTML. This is not a folder, this is a file. 
because only files will carry what is called we call this ones extensions am i making sense dot html like when you type something in word in microsoft word the extension for microsoft will be what dot doc okay or dot docx which you use now <coughs> am i making sense if you type anything using um um notepad you will see dot txt as a dot text am i making sense so that's how it is so it means now it means protocol http meaning this is a web page the domain name which is the location of the server now a folder called ng okay then there is a file inside this folder called login.html so immediately this is this is clicked upon it will immediately find the location of this inside this folder that's what a, a, a url is a url is now computer addresses computer with a direct connection to the internet have an address consisting of two or more words or abbreviation separated by dots in the url shown above the computer address book now so you will see that we have icon.org and the rest now there, there are so many uh country codes when it comes to um url you'll see something like um dot org dot uk dot jp you see dot gov you see dot edu abi you see dot uh dot uh what what else dot mail and so on and so forth now the common ones this dot org and dot com they are very common now dot org stands for organizations mostly non-profit organizations use dot org like churches like charity organizations and so on and so forth they use dot org okay if you say a church that uses dot com then it means it's a money making church okay so dot com stands for commercial okay now actually the, the the internet actually started it was dot com that that was the the main um uh, ex, uh let me see, let, let me call it I, I don't want to use the word extension that was being used at first but later they had to like break it down so that by looking at the domain name you can understand what kind of organization you are visiting like dot gov means government okay like dot mil american military dot edu means education dot jp japan okay dot uk united kingdom like dot ng now is for what nigeria so most of us we have something like something like uh like esmc dot edu dot ng you know you can see the two combined okay so you start to say okay this is a domain name it means this particular domain name is an educational website based in what in nigeria are we making sense so that's how it is now when we talk about http hypertext um markup language and HTML um, and http when you say hypertext transfer protocol which is http we, we also want to talk about hypertext markup language which is html now hypertext markup language which is html is the predominant markup language for web pages okay it provides a means to describe the structure of text-based information in a document by denoting certain text as link headings paragraph list and so on and so forth what we are saying is it is actually the language of the what of the www of the web okay it is the language of the web so every browser understands html okay even when you write um, a website using php okay it is converted into 
HTML because browsers understand HTML. Okay, so there are there are there, there are there are codes. If you want to write using HTML, you must understand HTML codes. Okay, and so on and so forth. Now, what is um, we are not saying HTML is written in the form of tags that are surrounded by single brackets. HTML can also describe to some degree the appearance and um, semantics of a document and can include embedded scripts in language code such as JavaScript. It can affect the behavior of web browsers and other HTML processors. Don't let me bore you with that. Now, let's talk about the internet. So, when you say the internet, according to what we have here, many people use the term internet and World Wide Web, or in short, the web, interchangeably. However, they are two very different things. Now, the internet is the underlying global system of interconnected computer networks consisting of millions of private, public, academic, business, and government networks. These networks are linked by an array of electronics, wireless, and optical networking technologies. So when you say the internet, the internet is actually connection, a wide-range connection of computers around the world. Okay? So, and the internet consists of different types of connection. Okay? Am I making sense? Like, there is wireless connection in it, there is wired connection in it, there is um, optical fiber connection in it, there is so many things come together to form the internet. Now, we are not saying the internet supports different applications such as email, okay, um, communications, and the World Wide Web by transporting information across the network. Now, when we now say, we say, think of the internet as being the road and motorways in a transport system. Applications like email, Skype, and World Wide Web are the vehicles that people or and people that use the road. What we are saying in essence is, when you say the internet, the internet is like the express road. Every other application, every other service, they pass through what? The internet. They pass through the road. Now, when you now say, Ah, I'm going, I want to go and check the internet. You're not checking the internet now. Okay? Am I making sense? You, only, you, are, you are only using an application of the internet. You are only browsing. You are only, that's why sometimes some people say, you want to go and sort the net. Okay? Now, what is now World Wide Web? The World Wide Web is an example of an application that uses the internet. So you can see that there are two different things. The internet is the main connection, but the World Wide Web is actually an application that is using the internet. The World Wide Web is a global connection of collection of documents, images, and other resources stored in millions of databases, sitting on computers around the world. These documents, images, and resources are interrelated by eye panels and reference or index through unique identifiers. Identifiers are similar to street addresses that uniquely identify properties around the world. Now, what we are saying in essence is on the World Wide Web, that's where you go to when you do what? When you are browsing. Oh, I'm going to google.com, I'm going to yahoo.com, and so on and so forth. You are actually making use of what? The World Wide Web. Now, the World Wide Web consists of um, different kinds of files, images, videos, and so on and so forth. And you can see that when we say they are, they are linked together using hyperlinks, it means it allows you to be able to, when you click on a picture, that picture is linked to something else. Am I making sense? Like, when you go to a website, you see home. You see about us, Abby. You see services, and you see contact us. Okay. Now these are texts, and it could be text, it could be images. 
Am I making sense? But what makes this thing useful is your ability to be able to click on it. Okay? Your ability to be able to click on it and it will take you to another word, another set of documents. That's where hyperlinks comes in. It means this particular text has been linked to another document. So that what makes a website robust. That what makes a website interesting. Some website when you when you when you when you go through such website, when you browse such website, you will see that from one from any corner you can move around because it is well linked together. So that is how it works. Now, web browser software is used to access the World Wide Web and locate and view documents, images, and resources. Examples of web browser software include Internet Explorer, your Mozilla Firefox, your Opera, and so on and so forth. Now, a programming language called HTML, which is Hypertext Markup Language, is used to create web pages okay so there are, there are people around that that, that that create websites when you give them money all they do is they write html codes for you then you pay then they host it for you okay so we are still going to talk about hosting now when you now say server what is a server actually i remember in the last class we actually spoke about server but we'll just quickly now a server is a physical computer dedicated to run or host one or more services to serve the need of users and other computers on the network example they could print servers and web servers now when you say a server a server is actually a computer somewhere sitting somewhere okay that all other users are attached to and it provides and it gives them the information that they request from it okay just understand it that way now every website is stored in a particular computer somewhere that computer is connected to the internet so when you type www dot the name of the website behind that domain name lies an IP address which is the address of the server so immediately you press enter the network looks for the what the server on the network and immediately when it is found the website will be displayed from the folder on which it is what stored that's how websites works it's so you know most of us we think websites are maybe somewhere on the cloud you know sometimes they make us believe as if you know there's what we call cloud computing you know they make us believe that you are actually making computation on the cloud it's not cloud they just call it cloud because one it's available everywhere that's what we call um um it is available everywhere and you can access your folder your files anywhere so it is as if you are actually working under the cloud or you are actually browsing from the cloud so um we said in a typical office environment employees might use a desktop pc connected to servers via their company's network when an employee sends a document to print for example their pc actually sends the documents to the print server which receives similar prints request from many other pieces on the network that's why when you go to a, um, a, 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 um, a cyber cafe you will notice most cyber cafe only has one word one printer and you will see that there are many computers on which people are browsing but when one of them sends a print request you will notice everybody that sends a print request will go to the printer to what to get that print out that's how it is that printer is connected directly to the server that's why we say a server according to his name it is meant to what to serve it serves other computers connected to the network 
it shares its resources. If a printer is connected to the server, it shares the printer with other clients' computers. If a scanner is connected to a, a server, it shares the scanner. Anything connected. And note this. When you go to server cafe, let's assume this is the server. They will always talk about server room. Now, the computer is, is placed in a server room. Now, let me just draw a, a layman's diagram. Let's assume this is a cable that connects the server to all other computers. Now, this is one computer, computer two, computer three, computer four. Okay? Now, you, you are able to browse on these computers. Okay? But, alas, it is the server that is directly connected to the world, to the internet. These ones are not directly connected to the internet. They are only getting the internet from the what? From the server. The server is sharing its internet resource with these computers. That's why most time when you, you notice a snow connection, you see people say, go and reboot your server now. Reboot your server. Do you understand? So it's and whenever the server is down, if the server is down, all these ones will be unable to what? To work. You won't be able to browse on them. That's how it works. That's why we call them server. Now, how website host works. When we say website hosting, what do we mean by website host and website hosting? Web host. Web host. Now, internet hosting is a generic term that describes a computer or computers that support an internet based service. For example, when you say email host, whilst many of us might have a Hotmail or Gmail account, the actual account, we said a bit like or post box physically resides on one of Microsoft or Google's computers somewhere in the world. It is the physical computer that performs the role of email host by hosting our email account for us. So what we are saying in essence is, when you say an email server or email host, it means it is a computer somewhere that is what actually hosting or housing your email. So when you click on google.com or gmail.com and you sign in and your email inbox is displayed to you, you are actually are called, browsing through a particular computer somewhere. Everything is stored somewhere. Now there's what we call game host too. So you look at the game host as a server on which games reside. Have you ever played games online before? Yeah, yeah, there are, there are snow cars, there are even there are action games you can play online. Those games are stored on the computer for you to play. And the name of the server is called a game host. Now, there's another one called file host. That's where cloud storage. Okay, L let me read here. File host, also called cloud or online storage, involves a remote computer hosting user file. For example, rather than saving a Microsoft Excel file to your local hard drive, you in fact store it to the hard drive of a computer, perhaps even in a different country, by sending the file content across the internet. You can, do you understand what I mean by cloud computing now? So when they say cloud computing or cloud storage, they don't mean it is being stored on, your, on this physical cloud. It is a remote storage. The computer resides somewhere. So even if someone that has the ability to hack it, gain access to it, they can steal it now. Do you understand? So it is just a name to make you feel so comfortable. That's why we call it cloud computing. To have this, this mentality that, okay, wherever I go to under the cloud, I'll be able to access my what? my files. So, now, when we say internet protocol address, IP, an IP address is a code 
that uniquely identify a particular computer on the internet. Now, every computer on the internet has its own IP address. So you look at IP address as your normal home address. If someone is trying to send you um, a mail through post office, what do they do? They address it at the back with a stamp. Then what will be written at the back of the envelope is your what? Your house address, which is number three. Collins Street. Ikeja. Lagos. So look at this as your address. And wherever they are trying to distribute the mail, what they do is, the first thing they look for is from which country, or let me say from which part of this country is the um, post or the, the, the mail going to Lagos. Okay, inside Lagos, where in Lagos? You can see that they are not starting from here. They will start from here. Am I making sense? So, where in Lagos? Ikeja. Where in Ikeja? Collins Street. Before the number. So that's how it is. That's how, that's how the internet also works. Although I'm just trying to tell you only the IP address. There are some other things that are attached to it when you are, when you are sending information on the internet. So that the message will get to the right location. We call it, we call it routing. It will, be, it will create the right path for the message to get to the world, to the destination. So an example of an IP address is online 125.148.224.63. So this is an IP address, a, a, an address of a particular server on the internet. Okay, so that's how it works. Now, so when we, let's talk about internet service providers. We call them ISP, the internet service provider. An internet service provider is an organization that is an organization that provides physical access to the internet. The access might be provided in the form of a plug-in cable, e.g. copper or fiber optics, a Wi-Fi signal, or a mobile telephone signal. Practical example of ISP. Now, when you say ISP, it means the company that is providing your what? Your internet service. For example, here in Nigeria, we have so many. I don't want to mention. Okay, like your mobile, um, mobile telecommunications. You know them. Your MTN, your Airtel, your Global Com, they are your internet service provider. Because they, they provide you with the with the service for you to be able to be connected to the internet. Okay, that's why we call them ISP. And there are other ones too. All these 4G um, providers too, like Swift and so on. Now, there's what we call web hosting. Now, a web host stores all the pages of a website making them available to computers connected to the internet a website is identified by its domain name a domain name is for example www.google.com this is a domain name okay so when they say a web host a web host most of them they they, they what they do is they will provide the server for you you don't need to go and buy server because it might be expensive, it is expensive. Okay, now they will be the one to go through the ethic of making sure your files are what online every time. Okay, what you do is you just pay. They will, some some of them they will give you disk space, saying okay, a website of one gigabyte will give you a disk space of one gigabyte. You will pay maybe two thousand naira monthly. Okay, and they will make sure your website is always online. So it is stored on a server in their company. Are we making sense? So that's how it is. Now, um, website hosting services. As noted in the above definition, in order to publish a website, um, a website online, the author needs a website host which store all the pages that make up the website. 
The web host then makes the website available to computers across the globe via the internet and can be found through a domain name such as Microsoft.com. Do you understand? Now, when someone enters a domain name in their web browser or web browser address field, e.g. Google.com, their web server will locate the IP address of the website whose domain name they have what entered. The web server then loads or takes a copy of the website page or pages from the domain name's web host into the web browser. So it will be immediately what uploaded from the server into your own web browser. Now, when a company wants to publish their website, they will need to locate and sign up for a web hosting service. Locating one should not be a problem. Given there are literally thousands, there are many uh, web host companies in Nigeria here that I can't mention. There are some that I make use of too. There are some that will give you good services that you will be like, wow. Even there are cheaper ones too. Okay, so you just have to be careful. Now, let's talk about bandwidth. Now, there are some terms that are being used that most people don't really understand. Now, what do we mean by bandwidth? Bandwidth. Now, when we say bandwidth, bandwidth describes the maximum data transfer rate of a network or internet connection and measures how much data can be sent over a, spe a specific connection in a given amount of time. Now look at bandwidth as, as let me put it in, in a layman form, like how much data or how much load can pass through a network at a given time. Do you understand me? That's bandwidth, like how much load a road look at this for example look at the express the express road you know we have different kinds of road or the different types of road we have the we have the a trunk a trunk b and trunk c and so on now look at the normal road that is just like this someone is coming this way so this is a one lane road okay we are using the same road those that are coming this way and those that are going they are still using the same road. Now, when you now say bandwidth, now, at a particular period of time, how many cars can pass through this road? Look at this. Please, just give me something. How many cars can pass through this road at a particular time? You can't get it. <laughs> at a particular period of time, like for a particular second or at a particular level, how many cars? Just two. Just two cars can move side by side. That's what we are saying. That's at a particular time. Do you understand me? Just two cars. So it can even be cars. Both of them are going this way. Yeah. Yeah. Both of them are. But it should not exceed two. If three should try to go, then there will either be maybe okay they will slow down for the three to accommodate the three or there will be crash am i making sense now look at a road that has that is this wide and has um what is called this is a um, a covet now they say this one this one is for those that are going those that are coming so this is this one has something like this Now let's look at this. This is a three lane road. This is a three lane road. Why do we call it three lane? It means at a particular time, three cars can go. At this. So look, that is what bandwidth is. Like how much traffic, how much traffic can a website or can a connection hold at a particular period of time? That's bandwidth. Okay, so even when you are trying to host your website, you must check for the bandwidth size. Some 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 web hosting company will give you unlimited bandwidth. 
Look at okay. Let me give you an example. Most of us that 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 want to assess jam websites sometimes. We, sometimes we notice that in the afternoon it is very hard. Most especially when jam uh, registration is to 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 close the following day. The website will be very slow. Even sometimes it will not even go. Why? Because imagine so over 10 million users on a particular website at the same period of time. It will not go because it has what? Overshot the connection. It is above, it is way above the bandwidth. Okay? Now, you now notice when you wake up 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. at night, then when you just go to the internet and try to bring it will go smoothly because so many people have gone to sleep and you'll be able to do your own registration even when they say unlimited bandwidth they still meter it they will still meter that bandwidth because they won't want you to take advantage of them so that's how it works now let's look at there are some other keywords to consider in web hosting there's what we call uptime percentage there is downtime, there is uptime. Let me just without reading. When they say uptime, uptime is actually the period of time for your website to be what? Available online. So you must look for a web host company that has a high percentage of time. The downtime period is the time period that people try to access your website, but your website is what? Is offline. That was downtime. Now another thing we want to talk about is what we call storage space. Can they be 24 hours of time? Can they be specified? 24 hours, 24 hours, like they will looking. Of course, there, there can be 24 hours of time. Of course, there can be. There can be 24 hours of time. Okay. Now there's what we call storage space. Now storage space comes to like how many storage space are we giving you? For you to host your com your your website on, even some some web post company will give you one gigabyte for for one thousand naira per month, one gigabyte hard disk. So it means out of their let me say one terabyte hard disk, we are giving you one gigabyte to use to store your website. Now let's assume you are a kind of your company is a kind of company that that. Um, accept um, multimedia images you accept pictures people upload pictures on your website they upload songs and so on and so forth it means immediately you finish your one gigabyte people will, will be unable to store things on your website anymore so most people like that what they do is they they, they, they have dedicated server and most of them they use the unlimited space okay now there's one, now there's e-commerce e-commerce describes the suit of tools required to take orders and payment for selling products online common example include paypal and ebay when we say e-commerce e-commerce are just like tools that allow people to do payment online like you go to some website like example of um let me say aliexpress you choose the kind of cloth you want immediately you choose you you notice that you, most times sometimes you are redirected to another website to make payment. Okay, here in Nigeria we have Vav. Okay, we have we have Vav. PayPal is an international um, e-commerce tool, and so on and so on. We have Vav, we have e transact and so on and so forth. Okay, so um, so uh, there is one other thing they said number of domains. Many companies might start off with a single domain name that identifies their website. However, multiple domain names either point to the same website. Have you ever noticed sometimes you see like www.google.com and you still see www.google.com.ng they are still they are the same website but different domain name points you to the same website am i making sense so that's how it is 
Now, uh, uh, number of emails and FTP account, those are, I'm just trying to tell you the, those things that they will try to offer you um, while trying to host you. Now, what are the types of web hosts or types of web hosting? We have the free web hosting. These ones, all they do is they will tell you we are hosting your website for free. But most of them, you know, they, nothing in the world is free. Okay, like when you say, when you example of a free host is something like this, they will host your website, but most of them will still have the name of their company at the back of your domain name, like me dot uh, blog spot dot com. You can see this is my own domain name or my own name now the name of that hosting company will still appear okay so nothing is for free so whatever you are giving out your domain name or your website address people will still identify with the word blog spot okay now there is the standard one the standard web is a is a broad term covering the most common form of paid web hosting a standard fee would secure a specific amount of server space on the web hosting system that provides high speed servers and quality software. The web hosting would typically use a shared system, granting each user, say, 10 gigabyte space on a 200 gigabyte server. So, what we are saying, in essence, is a standard web hosting it is basically a shared web hosting, meaning not only you. You are not the only user of that server. You are only using parts of the world of the hard disk size of the server. Okay? So most times it is it is even cheaper. It is the cheapest. Okay? It is the cheapest because you are using a shared hosting. Now, there's what we call a dedicated hosting. Dedicated web hosting describes when the client pays for their own dedicated server machine. For its website exclusive use. What we are saying is dedicated. It means I am all I am the only one to use this web server. No other company will use it. Or no other website will use it. It means post me, only me on this website and on this web server. And mind you, it is very expensive. It is expensive because you are using a dedicated server and you are the only person using the server okay uh there's what we call collo uh, collocation with free standard and dedicated hosting it's the web host themselves who owns the server hardware now collocation is similar to dedicated hosting in that a website resides on a dedicated server however with collocation it's it is the website owner who owns the server not the web host you can see that the what the company is doing that they are only providing service for you you are the owner of the server not the company now that's collocation now e-commerce i think we spoke about e-commerce e-commerce is required when a business sells goods on the on the web e-commerce web hosting described with an ssl secure socket layer uh has been added to one of the above type of web hosting to protect customers when paying for goods so that's why i was trying to distinguish between http and https so http means a uh, hypertext transfer protocol okay this one is hypertext transfer protocol secure meaning the website is what is secure it has what we call an SSL certificate, secure socket cert layer certificate. Okay. Now, when you are browsing the internet or when you are browsing on a website, if you want to pay money, if you do not see HTTPS, don't pay because it means the website is not what it's not secure. Um, basically, when you are browsing and you see this HTTPS, you will see a green kind of indication indicator before the www dot. 
to show that this website is what is secure. If it is under HTTP, most browsers will warn you that this website is not secure. And it doesn't mean that you should not visit such websites. But just make sure you are not entering sensitive information about yourself on the server, on the on the website. That's what it means. So you can see reseller, reseller. Some people will buy um, the reseller are just like people that buy a web host to resell to others. Okay, cluster companies with extremely popular sites will replicate the same content onto multiple server in order to provide better access to the web site visitor. This is called clustered web hosting. Okay, you, you are just trying to replicate that website onto different server. So, if people try to um, access your website, they have without knowing they have different options of servers on which they can what they can access the website so and it allows for how do i call it robustness it allows for easy access to websites so a web blog a web blog web blog hosting is where a company hosts web blog and blogs rather than websites uh, specifically web blogs are just like a page of Web, web of, of, of web page okay we call it blog um, actually it is actually used for um, basically for discussions okay um, um, to write articles and so on and so forth you can just log on to a web blog to read about a particular thing about a particular topic sometimes you have the ability to to, to leave comments 